To achieve these objectives, the government accorded emphasis on the development of small-scale industries, going back to the time when the father of Indian industries, Jamshi Ji Tata, ventured on his industrialization journey. Tata Power Company is currently India's largest private electric company. The village now exists in the city of Jamshedpur. Hi, this is Arish Joshi here and you are watching History Shorts. Please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon. Today, I am going to be speaking about the rise of entrepreneurship in India post-independence. This topic was suggested to us by Sanjeev Dhar sir. The government of India recognized the importance of industrialization and in its various industrial policy statements identified the responsibility of the state to promote, assist and develop industries in the national interest. It also recognized the vital role the private sector played to accelerate the industrial development and for this enough field was reserved for the private sector. To achieve these objectives, the government accorded emphasis on the development of small-scale industries throughout the country. Since the third five-year plans, the government of India began providing incentives and concessions in the form of capital, technical know-how and land to the potential industrialists in the industrial potential areas across the country. Several institutions like Directorate of Industries, Financial Corporations, Small Scale Industries Corporations and Small Industry Service Institute were also published by the Government of India to facilitate the new entrepreneurs in setting up their enterprises. The colonial government had brought in various economic and political factors which did not prove to be helpful for the growth of entrepreneurs. The political environment back then, harsh tax policies and lack of favourable laws did not allow the entrepreneurs to flourish. With the advent of the East India Company uh, as a direct result of the Industrial Revolution in England, focus now shifted to exporting raw materials from India and importing finished goods back to the country. After the third five-year plan, small entrepreneurs have witnessed an increase in the numbers, growing from 1,21,000 in 1966 to 1,90,000 in 1970. Between 1930 and 1938, the manufacturing output grew at a rate of 5.6% a year. This rate is linked to the Swadeshi campaign that emphasized the use of local goods. By 1914, India had the third largest railway network in the world, the world's largest jute manufacturing industry, the world's fourth largest cotton textile industry, the largest canal system in the world and held 2.5% of world trade. Going back to the time, when the father of Indian industries, Jamshi Ji Tata, ventured on his industrialization journey with the setting up of the Tata Industries in 1868. Let us now throw light on this journey of Jamshi Ji Tata. Jamshi Ji Tata was born to Nasarwanji and Jeevan Bhai Tata on 3rd March 1839 in Navsari in South Gujarat. Jamshi Ji and his family belonged to the Zoroastrian group who came to India after fleeing the persecution of Zoroastrians in Iran, he was born in a poor family of priests. His father, Nusarwanji, was the first person in, to start a business in a family of Zoroastrian priests. He broke the family tradition to start a business. He later set up an export trading firm in Mumbai. Quite unlike other Zoroastrians, Jamshedji had a formal Western education. His parents believed that Jamshedji was gifted with special mental arithmetic. He was later sent to Bombay to receive higher education. Jamshedji Tata joined the Elphinstone College in Bombay. After graduating, he joined his father's export trading firm and helped establish its strong branches in Japan, China, Europe and the United States. The time wasn't suitable then to start a business as the rebellion of 1857 had just been suppressed by the British. Jamshedji was then sent to China to gather knowledge regarding the business there. He was also sent to gather knowledge regarding the opium trade. The cotton textile industry, which was booming back then in China, managed to gather Jamshedji's attention, which, re which further resulted in him investing more in this industry throughout his lifetime. Tata founded a trading company in 1868 
with 21,000 rupees capital and bought a bankrupt oil mill at Chinchpokli in 1869, which he converted into a cotton mill. He renamed this as the Alexandra Mill. Two years later, Tata sold the mills to earn profit. In 1874, Tata floated the Central India spinning, weaving and manufacturing business in Nagpur as it seemed a suitable place to establish another business. Tata was conned at by the people of Bombay for not making a smart move in taking up the business there, which was also known as the Cottonopolis of India. Him starting up a business in the underdeveloped city of Nagpur wasn't understood by people. However, Nagpur eventually, Nagpur eventually led to his success. Land in Nagpur was cheaper than in Bombay and Nagpur was also filled with resources. Farm production was in abundance, distribution was easy and the cheap land led to the converging of railways in Nagpur. In 1877, Tata established a new cotton mill named Empress Mill when Queen Victoria was proclaimed the Empress of India on January 1st, 1877. Tata had four goals in life. The first was to set up an iron and steel company. The second was to set up a world-class learning institution. The third was to set up a unique hotel. And last was to set up a hydroelectric plant. Only the hotel became a reality during his lifetime with the inauguration of the Taj Mahal Hotel at Kolaba Waterfront in Mumbai on 3rd December 1893 at the cost of 11 million rupees. Taj Hotel at that time was the only hotel in India to have electricity. Tata was a strong supporter of Swadeshism. He continued to be very active in the industrial world even during his later phases of life. Tata's successors work led to the three remaining ideas to be achieved. Tata Steel is Asia's first and India's largest steel company. It became the world's fifth largest steel company after it acquired the Chorus Group, producing 28 million tons of steel annually. Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, the preeminent Indian institution for research and education in science and engineering. Tata Power Company is currently India's largest private electric company. It has an installed generation capacity of over 8000 megawatts. Tata's iron and steel plant was set up in the Sakchi village of Jharkhand. The village later grew into a town and a railway station there was named Tata Nagar. The village now exists in the city of Jamshedpur. Tata became the founding member of the Tata family. Jamshedji Tata's business was later taken over by his nephew, GRD Tata, who took the company's legacy to greater heights. An entire episode will be needed to cover GRD Tata's contributions to building a better and an able India. His contributions will be covered in the next video. Jai Hind and thank you very much.